1961, Canadian-American psychologist Albert Bandura conducted a set of psychological experiments that to this day remain some of the most influential psychological experiments of all time. He tested 36 boys and 36 girls at Stanford University Nursery School. They were aged between three and six. And the goal? To investigate whether aggression can be acquired through observation and imitation alone. Can social behaviours be learned simply by watching an interaction? After all, we know that a lot of people that have perpetrated acts of aggression have at one point been victims of aggression. Today, we know that children are sponges and learn from their environment, and that helps develop who they become in later life. So it might kind of seem obvious that, of course, you can learn by watching what other people do. But this was the very first time that this had been modelled in an experimental setting. Lots of you have asked for me to look at more historical old medical videos and we're doing just that of Albert Bandura's Bobo Doll experiment. Let's crack on. <laughs> this music hasn't aged a bit, has it? <laughs> it's so cheesy. So this must be Stanford University. The segment you're about to see is taken from them early experiment on learning of, a, of aggressive styles of uh, behavior uh, through modeling. This experiment was trying to prove that there's more than one way to learn. Until this point, a lot of learning theories had all been about this concept of conditioning. There was classical conditioning put forward by Pavlov. There's the famous experiment of Pavlov's dogs. They'd be exposed to food, they'd start to salivate. At the same time, somebody would ring a bell and before long, dogs would start to salivate at the sound of a bell because they're associating the bell with food. It's the association of two stimuli with the anticipation of a particular outcome. And then there was operant conditioning put forward by Skinner, which is about behavior being reinforced with reward or being diminished with punishment. If a rat presses a lever and they get a treat, they'll keep pressing the lever. If a rat presses a lever and they get a shock, they'll stop pressing the lever. There is more than one way to learn. And as we'll see, it's probably going to be a combination of imitation and of conditioning. Uh, children uh, watched a... Uh a uh, filmed adult uh, perform novel aggressive acts toward a uh, inflated doll and the physical aggression was um, accompanied by uh, novel uh, hostile uh, uh, remarks. Sweary. They're going to get a bit sweary. The experiment had three stages, modelling, aggression arousal and delayed imitation. So we said before, we've got 36 boys, 36 girls. So that's 72 in total. They were then split into three groups of 24, each group with 12 boys, 12 girls. One group was placed in a room with some toys that could be used in an aggressive way, some toys that aren't really used in an aggressive way. And then there's the Bobo doll, which is this like inflatable, creepy looking clown thing, which when you knock it down, just pops right back up. Now there was a model in the room. And for the first group, this model would be aggressive towards the Bobo doll. These adults would attack the Bobo doll in a very distinctive manner, not just sort of punching and throwing it, but using toys in an aggressive way that these kids probably haven't encountered before and using hostile language that they've probably not encountered before. Group number two, placed in a similar room. So toys that could be as aggressively or not aggressively. There's a Bobo doll, there is a model, but that model isn't aggressive towards the Bobo doll. They just do their own thing, playing with toys in a not aggressive way. And then the third group was the control group. So there's no model in the room. There's aggressive, non-aggressive toys, Bobo doll, no model. The uh, model pummeled the doll with a mallet flung it in the air. So these are some of the novel ways, like using the hammer, an aggressive toy, really, in this case. Kicked it repeatedly. Threw it down and beat it. And all the meanwhile, they'll be using hostile language. So the kids are watching that. That's the modeling bit. Stage two, the kids are taken out of the room, put into a room with just some fun toys. They're allowed to kind of get engrossed, play, have fun, and just as they're getting engrossed and having fun, the mean old adults come along and say, no, 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 take the toys away, and we're going to take you somewhere else now. And understandably, the kids get pretty miffed. So now these kids are miffed. They're taken into a room that was very similar to that first room they were in, where one group saw models being aggressive towards this Bobo doll. So it's interesting then to see how they're going to respond and manage their aggression. So the investigators, every five seconds, they'd make a recording of what the kid is doing. So over 20 minutes, that's like 240 observations to look for the types of aggressive acts that a kid might do and how it varied between the three groups, those that saw aggressive models, non-aggressive models, and no model at all. It was once widely believed that seeing others vent aggression would drain the viewer's aggressive drive. As you can see, exposure to aggressive modeling is hardly cathartic. 
What they saw was that the group that had observed a model being aggressive to the Bobo doll were unsurprisingly much more aggressive when they got frustrated. They imitated a lot of the same aggressive acts that the model did, including some verbal aggression, but there was also higher rates where they would almost improvise and be aggressive in a way that the model wasn't. They'd improvise with the toys around them and sort of create new ways to be aggressive. Of those that were aggressive, the boys tended to be much more physically aggressive than the girls were towards the Bobo doll, but there was no real difference in the verbal aggression exhibited between boys and girls. Exposure to aggressive modeling increased attraction to guns, even though it was never modeled. Guns had less appeal to children who had no exposure to the aggressive modeling. The children also picked up the novel hostile language. To this day, there are still concerns about how could this apply to kids that are exposed to violence on TV and films and video games? Does that increase the risk that they will go on to become violent by imitating what they've seen? Bandura was kind of onto this, really. And a year later, in 1962, basically replicated this experiment. But rather than the kids watching live models, they'd watch a video, basically, of a model being aggressive. There was no difference in the outcome. The children devised new ways of hitting the doll. Now the object of interest was, was the novel aggressive acts, not punching the doll. The children in the control group who had no exposure to the aggressive modeling never exhibited the novel forms of aggression. And here's a creative embellishment. A doll becomes a weapon of assault. There were several limitations of this study. Obviously, acting aggressive towards a Bobo doll doesn't reflect real life. If a child is exposed to violence, it's usually by people around them that there's some sort of emotional attachment to. Siblings, parents, that might be aggression towards them or between them that they're then observing. The emotional side is important. Also, if you're aggressive in real life, it's not usually to a Bobo doll that just sort of falls down and then flops back up again and doesn't retaliate. There's usually consequences to your actions and those could be that somebody's quite passive in response to aggression or that they retaliate. In 1965, Bandura did another sort of version of this experiment, testing something that he called vicarious reinforcement. The children were exposed to this aggressive modeling that was either then rewarded or punished. Those that observed aggression that was then rewarded were more likely to be aggressive themselves towards the Bobo model than those that had seen aggression that was subsequently punished. It suggests that observing violence can lead to the memory of, of, of what you've seen and the memory of violence, but perhaps the consequences are what influences your control over whether you imitate that or not. So in this case, learning probably isn't purely by imitation or by conditioning, combination of the two. These studies assess the immediate impact of frustration and how you have an outlet for that frustration, but it can't draw any conclusions about your long-term psychological development and how that might impact long-term chronic tendencies for aggression in response to frustration. And then, like many psychological experiments of this era, there is the questionable ethics and the unknown long-term consequences on the children that were put through these experiments. We don't know what the consequences of the study was, and frankly, I don't think we can ever know. And this is certainly not an experiment that would ever get through an ethics approval process, thank God, today. <laughs>